either in the past, um, and some of you probably don't remember that, um, or, or are new this year since we've added Miss Dina. Um, but I wanted to get on here. We put together, Dina and I have worked together to put together some packages um, for you guys to stay busy while we're all at home. And um, let's see, what are we going to do? Yeah, but it's super easy. It's a super easy project. This is for the younger kids, um, I would say. Actually, it's for anybody. Anybody who wants to do this project can do this project. So the first thing that you're going to need is the fish template that we have um, in your packet. We're going to use that to help inspire us to draw our fishies. Um, and then you will also need the fishbowl template. Now, you can use this template that we've drawn out for you, or you can draw your own, and it doesn't matter. You can be creative with whatever shape that you want to draw. Um, just, you know, draw a fishbowl. Make sure that it's anchored somewhere. We don't want any floating fish balls or fish bowls. Um, so just make sure that the, the shape of the bowl is on there and that you give it a, a surface to anchor it to. Um, so draw the horizon line in there for the table. Um, you can see, I believe, up on the board, let me see. Yeah, there, I've kind of drawn in an example. So you want to put your paper like that, the long way to the top, and then um, we're gonna draw a, a fish or two, however many fish you wanna draw in your fish bowl is fine. And then we wanna add some of the elements that you would find in an aquarium um, so that the fish is not lonely. We have to um, draw in his natural habitat. Okay, so let's get started. You are gonna need a dark colored crayon. Cedar and I have a black and a blue. Either one is fine. And we're going to use this. Um, there we go. We're going to use this to draw in the outlines of our fish. And then the other thing that you will need is some watercolors, which we have ours. Um, if you don't have watercolors at home, it's totally fine to do this with um, just crayons, right? and uh, you can color it in with crayons and markers. Either way, whatever you have on hand is fine. So you just need a blank piece of paper, um, a crayon. If you're gonna do watercolors, the crayon, the wax from the crayon creates a resist so that it helps you stay in the lines a little bit better. And then um, some watercolors if you have them. And if you don't, that's totally fine. Use your markers or use your um, crayons. So I am going to help Cedar get started on this and then we will come back and we'll show you the finished product. Okay, we've got it set up. So, are you gonna draw your fishies? Mm -hmm. Which fishies are you gonna draw? Okay, all right, I'm gonna draw mine too. I like this guy right here. He looks fun. I'm gonna draw him in, just like that. He's kinda got a big belly. Sometimes these gills look like mohawks to me. What do you think, Cedar? Does it look like he's got a mohawk? I'll show you. See? I think he looks like he has a mohawk. <laughs> yeah, that's a good fish. Good job. All right, let's keep drawing. And we're gonna put in some little curly Q cloud humps in there for gills and scales. Cedar, have you ever been fishing? Yeah, once with Papa. Yeah, did you catch any fish? Can you give him a, a fin? Yeah. Can you give him a tail fish or tail fin? So you caught a fish with Papa? Yeah. Yeah. We caught a fish and put it back in. Yep, yeah, you threw him back. One time I was fishing with him in the pond and um, right beside my... Um, my fishing rod, mm -hmm. um, I saw bubbles. You did? Was that a fish? I don't know, maybe it was some kind of giant shark or melon <laughs> or a megalodon or a megalodon. Maybe. 
Maybe. An alligator. An alligator. I wonder if your other friends from your art class have ever seen any um, crazy fish in the in the pond. Do you think? No. No? Well, they might have. They might have seen it. It's possible. Okay, I am drawing in some of the little things that you see in an aquarium. Uh, one of our teachers, Miss Gina, I don't know if you guys know her or not, but she's one of our dance teachers. She, um, she and her husband have an aquarium and they really like their fish. They're super cute, and fun to watch. We had an aquarium one time, but it did not go well. I don't think we are fish people. Um, okay, so I've got a couple of things drawn in here. I've got this fish drawn in and this fish, and then I've put in a little piece here. What I want you to think about, ooh, look at you. What I want you to think about is, that is good. When you look at things in real life, we have things that are close to us and things that are far away. So let's say these fish are close to us and maybe this little piece is close to us too, but I wanna put in some things that would be maybe behind that fish to make it interesting. Otherwise, they kinda of look like they're floating, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in some of those. Some water. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try this one and put that behind one of my big fishes. My big fishy. Yep, you need water, he's right. You gotta have some water in there because that is the natural habitat of some fish. Remember, when you draw things that are near and far, you have to constantly think about what is in front and what is behind. Look, just like that. And a lot of this will come out when we do it with color, with our watercolor, but See how I put the leaves in there behind the fish and I made it come all the way up back there? You kind of have to use your imagination where the line goes. But if I am drawing, I don't know if I can do this or not, but if I'm drawing it, I would come here and I'd pick my crayon up and I'd skip over his fin and then I would draw again right here. And so I'm following the line of that leaf with my imagination. And see, even the leaves are overlapped. See, this one's behind the other leaf. Okay, and then don't forget to draw some cute little bubbles going up because we know the Mommy, fishies what? make bubbles. Mommy, there's bubbles wrapping. I love it. Can you try to draw maybe some seaweed? See, like this one? Draw some little bubbles. And just fill up your paper. And then we'll get our paints out. I'll let you finish. I'm gonna prepare our watercolors while you're finishing your drawing. I hope you are painting along with us at home. <clears throat> Mama, I draw some seaweed. I love it. Can you connect it to something? Maybe draw a hill right there so it's not floating. If you're working with watercolors, it's important to remember that more water equals lighter paint. Less water equals more intense color. So for my water, I'm gonna use a really diluted brush. It's gonna be very watered down as I paint in the water for my um, fishbowl. Hey, we can't see you anymore. <gasps> Better scoot over here. <laughs> it's my partner in crime. Mama. Yeah. I got. Yes. Um, there's a hill up here. Um, barnacles right there. Barnacles, yep. Where did you learn that big word? Barnacles. Barnacles. They're in. They, they can sometimes end up on boats. Mm-hmm. 
I like it. Can I show them your drawing? Didn't he do good? He filled it right up. I look, I see some stuff that kind of reminds me of SpongeBob. <laughs> did, you, <laughs> did you put SpongeBob in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's your brush and here's your paints. I'm gonna move this so that you can paint yeah, away. Are you done drawing? That's okay. Let's start painting. You ready? <laughs> okay. Oh, I need to draw. I need to draw this plant. Oh, well, you might have to make him really small. <laughs> like he's far away. Yeah, like he's far away. Good job. I'm going to keep painting in my background here. And if you get to painting and you're like, oh, that color is way too dark, um, just wet your brush. Wet your brush and... Spread it around. Watercolor is really forgiving. That's why I like to yeah. use it with the little kids. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's awesome. You ready to paint? Yeah. Okay. This is your brush right here. Okay, so I've got my water painted in, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my table surface, get all that painted in, and then I'll spend some time on my fish details. I like these watercolors because you can take the little puddles out and share them among all the students. I love you too. The bath. Um, that's something that really sticks out to me about this time is um, I think us as parents would get really busy with just um, the day-to-day -day stresses in life and I think this even though it's been inconvenient has really forced us to slow down and it's forced us to focus on the things that are the most important and um, just like what he just said, he loves just, he just loves being together and doing something fun. So I hope that you join in with your kids and do this together. I love it. You know, get all right in here. Get all your waters. And then paint all the way up to the top of the bowl. Let's see. I think I'll do this for my background so it doesn't distract from my fish. Um, remember to save your artworks that you work on even at home because we're going to have a gallery night um, for all of our art students which we try to do every year to celebrate all of the beautiful creations that they've made. I see it. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Um, so we want you to bring those so that we can put them on display for that gallery night. Okay. So Mommy. this is not dry, but you can see I've painted in the background and I've painted in the table. And you know, for some people they think, ooh, that looks messy. But I really like the texture. So um, to each his own. If you want to fill in those spaces that look kind of crazy, feel free. Um, but I really like the, the textured look. I love abstract paintings and I love um, uh, 
mixed media paintings that have lots of texture pieces. I, I did a painting one time that was just found objects like washers and um, I even put plastic bags on there and I don't know, just random things like paper, stuff that created a lot of texture, plaster. I love all of that. It's I super fun. Ooh, I love it. We should show it my You want me to show him? Okay, here we go. So this is what he's got so far. I think he's doing an awesome job of staying in the lines. Um, he is six, so this, I feel like that's really good. <laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> you wanna paint your table and your background or do you wanna work on your fish? <laughs> okay, so he said this looks almost like Polynesian sauce. Can you tell he likes Chick-fil-A? Yeah, uh, I don't think we ever go out to eat anywhere except Chick-fil-A. <laughs> oh, goodness, you make me laugh. Okay, fish or background? Which one? Yeah. Okay, so start picking a color for your fish. And your color, your fishies can be lots of colors if you want. Does not matter. put a dog in the background that sounds good what's the dog gonna be doing is he gonna be looking at the fish or something else okay I'll show you where I'm at right now so see the sorry, my paper is a little thin um, see this color right here that's the same color as the table, but I used more water with the table than I did with the color of the sand. So you can do that. You don't have to have tons of colors with watercolor. You can alter it with um, how much water that you use. And you can see too, I don't know if you can tell up close, but um, the crayon marks really keep a nice resist for the watercolor so that it doesn't bleed too badly into the other ones. Now, with the little kids, that's what we do. Um, but with the big kids, we start learning the two different techniques that you can do, which is wet on wet or wet on dry. And sometimes with the wet on wet, you want it to bleed because that gives a really cool effect. He's drinking. Is he? He's drinking a bowl. He's drinking a bowl. All right, let's paint some fishies. Can you my paper? Uh-huh. Yeah, see? He drew a dog. <laughs> <laughs> He <laughs> drew a dog in there. Super cute. Okay, I am going to give this guy, and this is something to consider too when you're doing your fish. Don't use as much water on the colors so that they are really bright. So we want them to be the focal point. Ah. Did we get in each other's way? Mm -hmm. I wonder what color, what color are fish lips? What? Fish lips. What color are the fishies lips? Blue. Blue? <laughs> Can you make a fish face? Like this? Mm -mm. Can't do it? <laughs> What 
color is your dog going to be? Brown. <clears throat> Brown. Okay, I think I'm done painting in. that dry and he's gonna finish painting his um, once it's dry if you want to if you um, if your crayon didn't turn out as dark as you like it you can always go back with a marker a sharpie something like that um, that can help add some definition <laughs> to your painting are you done yeah yeah are your fish all gonna be white or do you want to my fish are going to be white. They're going to be white. Okay. All right. I'm going to hold it up. Okie dokie. Here is Cedars. Don't pick your nose. <laughs> ah, okay. So that's Cedars. He did a good job. That's awesome. And here is mine. We're going to let them dry. I'm probably going to go back over mine with... Um, a sharpie just to bring out the details of the fish but we hope that you enjoyed the lesson and um, we'll be <laughs> we'll be doing some more um, there should be some color sheets in your packet and if you want to color this sheet when you're done feel free to do that you could even cut them out and create a cut and paste scene um, on a whole nother piece of paper so have um, permission from your parents to use your scissors or make sure that you don't have the really pointy ones. I don't want you to cut yourself. But have fun. Cut and paste, color, and make a whole nother um, artwork. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.